In today's video, I have 10 easy hacks that you can make using Dollar Tree items. These are going to take items you can find easily at the Dollar Tree and make useful pieces of decor. So let's get started. First one is great because this specific sign is available now at Dollar Tree for Valentine's Day. You can make this really useful for a kitchen or home office. To start out, I'm going to carefully remove the front piece. You want to do this carefully so that the whole thing doesn't break. And as you see here, they have a little bit of a raised part on the side. That is what actually makes this a functional piece. And we're going to add a little bit more to that so that we can use this for either mail or I plan on putting coupons in this. So I wanted to modernize this a bit. So I do have a free printable down in the description box below. I love this pattern and I just wanted to go ahead and fit it to the top piece. We're going to go right over those side MDF pieces that were added. I did take off the hanging piece on this and then I'm just going to trace and then I use some spray adhesive to attach this. Now, like I said, let me know if you have seen these envelope signs. They are new to my Dollar Tree and I definitely think that picking up pieces like this, um, even though they're seasonal, you can always transform them into year-round functional decor. Now that front piece, I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint and ink and then go ahead and paint that so it matches our paper. There we go. I lost the word there. So I am going to hot glue two craft sticks or popsicle sticks to either side. That way I have a little bit more room. So when I reattach this, I can add envelope, not envelopes. I guess you could add envelopes, um, mail or coupons. Let me know if you are like me and you always have coupons circulating and then you forget to use them as they're kind of out of sight, out of mind. I think this is definitely a cute piece to put on um, your kind of kitchen area or wherever you want to sort your mail or your coupons. So you have everything in one place. So you're going to do this to both sides and then you're going to attach that front piece with some hot glue. That is it for this really easy hack. You can do so many different things with this, but I think this was a great base and that's how I like looking at Dollar Tree items, looking at them as a base and then you can transform them to suit your home decor style. Let me know in the comments what you think about our first DIY hack. is a great way to take the fabric pieces the Dollar Tree always has, as well as a picture frame and give it a new look picture frame sign from Dollar Tree. It was in like the seasonal Mother's Day section, but I've seen this also where the picture frames usually are. So I'm going to remove the backing and then Dollar Tree's crafter square section does have a whole bunch of scrap fabric rolls. So I'm going to use this ticking stripe or pinstripe. Let me know down in the comments. Um, and I am going to trace this first and then I'm going to add this with some glue to the frame. Now, this frame is really pretty as is, but I think this is a great way that you can kind of spruce up a piece. Also have an excuse to use the really cute patterns that the crafter square section has been having in their fabric. Let me know if you have picked up some of the fabric rolls lately. I usually used to pass them by, but they have some really nice patterns that to me look more store-bought. Um, and also they do cut pretty easily with a paper trimmer. Of course, be careful for any fraying, but I use that in a combination with my scissors and it cut just fine. Attach this, I'm going to use some hot glue in sections and I made sure also I cut out that middle piece. Um, that way, so you can obviously add the picture. I almost forgot when I did this. I'm like, oh, I need a place for the picture. So a little hot glue in sections and just spread out the glue so you see no bumps. And that was able to adhere this just fine to the picture frame. Really leave this as is, but I decided to use one of these kind of vintage looking stickers. Now this does have adhesive obviously because it's a sticker. I did add a little bit of hot glue since I didn't find that it held that well to the fabric. It just adds a nice decorative touch and I absolutely love the way that this turned out. I'm going to take some of these small tile signs and I'm going to show you a way to make them into functional bookends. And then I'm going to spray paint them with this Anvil Chalky Spray Paint. And then for these, you are just going to hot glue them so that they form like a bookend shape. And then to reinforce that, of course, you can use 
super glue and hot glue or what I did was I just added a craft stick um, to the back of it just to make sure that it stays in place and I have these on my bookshelf now and they're working great. Um, let me know in the comments if you have crafted with these smaller signs before from Dollar Tree and some projects that you think would be good with these. Um, now I picked up, I'll have them in the description box below, this two pack of these um, vases. These worked perfect kind of as an anchor and a decorative um, element for these bookends. Um, I think they were like $12 for two. And then I took some pompous grass. Now, of course, you can take Dollar Tree florals. These are also from Amazon. Really good deal. You'll be seeing these a ton in my fall content this year. Um, I have lots of like boho fall ideas for you. Um, but I thought these would be really nice, so I added them. Again, Dollar Tree florals work just fine. Um, you just want to make sure that whatever you use, you trim it and just kind of play with it, that it sets well. Now, of course, you can use Dollar Tree vases also or little decorative accents. Lots of options for this, but I think these turned out great. Let me know what you think of these. I think this is such a great way to take like these random signs or tile signs, whatever you want to call them from Dollar Tree and make them unique, decorative, and functional. Our book end project is going to be using some wood pieces from Dollar Tree. Now I shared this back in the fall and I use these porcelain skull pieces, but this can be recreated using some scrap wood that you either have or you get from Dollar Tree, some of the larger wood crates. I used four for this. And then anything you wanna use as an anchor, or you can even do this without it. You can do a little vase like I did in the previous bookend video, or that video, DIY I just shared. So lots of different options here. So keep that in mind, even though you're gonna see the skulls, you can do this really with anything. So for these, lots of different options. I decided to go with this wine color. I also did a kind of grayish taupe, a plum and a green, but according to your style, your preference, when you're even making these for what time of year, I know I'm definitely gonna share a few other options um, as different seasons come around for this idea. And I did bookends recently, which I will link down below or up in the cards. Um, so it really depends what color you want. Also a nice stain would look nice for this. So that depends on you, but I wanted to make this, um, vibrant while still being neutral. Now for this, you are going to want to paint the front part that you're going to see, which is the side, the top, and then the back. Cause that's going to be like the body of the book. My Dollar Tree always has a ton of these type of wood trays, so let me know in the comments if you would like to see some more hack or DIY videos using these specific wood crates or trays. So now for the second one, I'm not going to show you the painting for everything. I did want to point out though that I used the same sponge brush that I did with that wine color. The reason I did, did this is that if you're using a more neutral tone like I'm doing here, and let's say you painted something a little bit deeper before, if you keep that on the brush and kind of dab it a little bit, it will add a little bit of warmth to that paint color that you're using so that way it kind of blends in a bit goes with the same tone but still is a different color if that makes sense so again the front the top and the bottom which is going to be like the base of the book to paint these or we're going to faux stain these wood pieces before cutting them. I already have my marks with a pencil and what I did was take some water in this really janky <laughs> Dollar Tree glass I think candle votive piece I have. I like to save this for this exact reason. I just took some brown acrylic paint put it in the water and then I mixed it. I like to use a sponge brush. I know that it's very absorbent, so some people might not like, like to do that, but I like that I'm able to pull a lot of the paint. So what I first do is mix that up and then I like to add a kind of heavy coat of this on the wood. And then once I have that and it's still wet, I am going to, um, I had some paint in there <laughs> that still went over. I'm going to um, wipe a paper towel. You can also use like an old sock, an old shirt. 
um, just so it gives it that faux stain look. And I did this for just the portion that is going to be cut as well as the sides and the back. That way everything looks cohesive. Now it does look really dark, but you'll see once I wipe it away that it does give the look of a nice light stain. Let me know in the comments if you have done just an acrylic paint slash water stain like this before. I prefer it because I absolutely despise the smell of stain. It is beautiful using stain, but I could, if I can avoid having that smell, that is what I'll do. So again, I just did the sides and then I wiped away just like I did on the top there so that it looks like a stain and this dries pretty quick too. So that's another kind of bonus of having this be a faux stain. It does not take as long as a traditional stain. that once you have that on and it's still wet that is when you want to wipe this and it gives it that nice stain look and don't forget to do the edges as well so it looks nice and cohesive now again lots of options for what you want to do with the books dollar tree has some awesome raised stickers that would look good I went ahead and used my Cricut, but of course you can use stencils. You can use a printable, some graphite tracing paper and a pencil and trace that on. You can even handwrite with a paint marker. So many different options for this, or you can just leave them without anything. Um, I decided to go half Edgar Allan Poe themed because I absolutely love Edgar Allan Poe. So I did The Raven and Annabelle Lee, my favorite poem from Edgar Allan Poe. And then for the other ones, I decided to do a vertical, just potions and spells. So a little more Halloween themed, but truth be told, I'm keeping this in my house year round on my bookshelf because it's just my style. So I was so excited to find these porcelain sugar skulls. I picked up another style as well. They also had owls and I believe pumpkins. So for this, lots of different options. I know they say that a lot, but I do like to provide different options in case you don't like a specific color or style. I just spray painted this in a matte black spray paint and that was it for that. Now you can also dry brush and highlight, but I decided to leave it as is. So now once everything is dry, we're going to construct this. So to the edge, I'm going to hot glue my first book. You want the insides of the trays to face inward so it gives that appearance of a faux book. And then I'm going to start with those two books on the side. And then I decided to have the skull porcelain Dollar Tree piece going forwards. You could also do it going to the side, but I thought it was so pretty pretty and I love the height on it so I wanted to show that. So hot glue for that as well and I'm going to have that leaning up against those faux books. This is going to add weight and sturdiness to this project which will make it not only decorative but functional. So that is what the first side looks like. I am obsessed with this project. This is probably one of my favorite projects I've done on my channel I think ever. <laughs> um it's just something I've been wanting. I love faux book bookends and they get so expensive. So to be able to do this project for under $10 is a total win. I think honestly it was like $8 total for this. So the same thing I did on that side, I'm going to do with this side. Again, making sure you hot glue that skull so it's right up against those wood crates. And that is it. So this is a great way to turn these into this. Now, a little bonus with this is that you can customize this to whatever your decor style is, have the book say whatever you want. You can leave them like this so that they look decorative, or you can also put actual books in between them and make them a functional book end piece. So I love the versatility of this. If you are not new to my channel, you know that I love sharing things that you can decorate with as well as use because we don't, all don't have like endless space in our home. So it's nice to have something fun, something homemade, but something that also serves a purpose. So I feel like this definitely does that and it saves you so much money. Again, under $10 and I love how this turned out. So let me know what you think in the comments. Next, I'm going to show you a way to use the pegboard system at Dollar Tree, make it functional and decorative. So I will be using this 12 by 12, I believe, pegboard from Dollar Tree, some of the pegboard hooks, also the pegboard shelf and the adhesive set that helps you adhere this to the wall. So starting with this pegboard, I'm going to leave this as it, well, no, I'm not going to leave this as is. What am I saying? <laughs> 
This is the one I'm using and this is the back of it, which I will use that kit, but I wanted to elevate this a little bit. So I love this chevron wood pattern. This is a peel and stick wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. So I am going to center this. Um, instead of having it be like the edges centered, I'm going to use that center line, line it up with the pegboard itself, and then I am going to peel the backing and add this to the piece. Don't worry, we are still going to use this as a functional pegboard, but I really wanted to make this look decorative and not like your typical pegboard that you will see. Now, let me know in the comments if you have found these pegboards at your Dollar Tree. I know mine has the accessories for them. It has the size that I'm using in white and black, and then some smaller panels. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my box cutter and I'm gonna cut away the extra first peel and stick wallpaper. But with that box cutter, I'm not gonna cut the wallpaper i'm just kind of using that because it's not sharp enough to go through this wallpaper it's pretty thick i'm more using that to kind of score the paper so it folds more and then i'm just going to wrap this and adhere this with its own kind of self stickiness so that it looks a little more polished you could totally cut this and then have the white edges but i thought this looked a little more polished having it done that way going to flip this over and taking a pencil you're going to carefully start poking holes now don't worry because when you poke the holes and you flip this over it's going to look like a hot mess there's going to be little pieces of the wallpaper sticking out on the other side the reason why i'm starting in the back with this is one so i can actually see where the pegboard holes are and then i'm going to go back in with that pencil and poke through the other way. That way it's gonna kind of make all of the holes even and not have any paper going, but this way is just a lot easier so you can see where you actually need to have the holes. So you see it's kind of jagged and messed up. We're gonna fix that once we go ahead and do the rest of the holes. Now, let me know in the comments, have you used pegboards, whether from the Dollar Tree or from wherever, what do you use for them? Do you use them for crafting supplies in an office? I know there are so many different ways to use them when you go on Pinterest. And I'm always curious to know how everyone uses their pegboards. Once those are all poked, we are going to flip this over. And what I did before I put the pencil in is take one of the Dollar Tree sanding sponges, lightly go over the pieces of the paper that are sticking out, kind of smooths them away. And then I use the pencil and just kind of twist it a few times. And then as you see, it gives you that traditional pegboard look, but we are doing this decoratively. So you get that background with the peel and stick wallpaper, which I totally recommend over using a scrapbook paper and Mod Podge, you're gonna get bubbles. And then with all of the holes in the pegboard, I just feel like it can get a bit messy. So if it is, if it is, this is, there we go, what it looks like. Now we are gonna add some of the accessories. I love that Dollar Tree has accessories for these pegboards. I'm gonna put this in my kitchen. I'm gonna kind of make it like a command center drop zone type thing. So you can use any combination of things that you want. I'm just gonna give you an idea. Now I wanted some type of chalkboard to go on this. Originally I was gonna use the sign I showed on the right from Dollar Tree, but instead I'm using this wood plank and I'm gonna take some of the chalkboard sticker paper that Dollar Tree has. This comes in a two pack and this is great if you don't wanna use chalkboard paint. Really quick and easy, just trace and cut and then you can apply that and you have a chalkboard in minutes. Excited for the little kit to hang this up. Super easy, you're just going to take the little hanger pieces and the adhesive. You're gonna first pop the hangers in in the four corners of the pegboard and then you're gonna peel the adhesive Add one side like you would with a command strip or hook 
to the kind of backing and then the other piece is going to go on the wall. And then on the packaging, it gives instructions to make sure the surface is clean, dust free, the whole nine yards. So pretty self-explanatory and I was impressed with how well these hold up. hangers are on. I'm going to hot glue our wood piece. I'm going to have this on the left side. I already kind of eyeballed where I wanted the hooks and the shelf so I know that this fits. And with some hot glue, we're going to apply that. And then we are going to put this on the wall and then add the other pegboard accessories. Once I have this adhered on the wall, I let it set for a little bit and then I'm going to add the hooks on the bottom right and then I'm going to add the shelf a few rows ahead of that. So this is what it looks like with nothing on it. I love how this fits my home decor, kind of that modern boho style. You can do any style of course that fits your home, but I feel like it just dresses up that otherwise kind of just plain boring pegboard. So this is what it looks like and I have this in this little corner of my very open concept kitchen, but it fits perfect. I have our AirPods on there, mine and my husband's, his glasses, I even put his wallet on the shelf, um, a hand sanitizer, and this is just a really pretty and functional piece. Using those Dollar Tree pegboards, you know I love on my channel if you're not new, combining functional with decorative, and I feel like this definitely does both. I combine some wood pieces from Dollar Tree and a small mirror to make a tabletop vanity mirror. I'm using a wood block from Dollar Tree and some of their new wood pieces, and we're just going to glue these together and make a vanity mirror. So this is the smaller Miller, Miller? No the smaller mirror. That is a mouthful <laughs> from Dollar Tree. I'm first going to start with what's going to be kind of like the stand for this. And then I did have to add, and you'll see some wood pieces, like little beads to the back, just for some stability so that the mirror does not come off of this. But this is a great way to get kind of a funky modern look, taking some of those Dollar Tree wood pieces, adding them with some easy to find pieces like their mirrors to get a fun, functional, yet decorative piece. Now I did add a craft stick to the mirror just to make sure there was a little more stability. Plus I wanted to make sure that I can kind of lean this back so that it doesn't kind of tilt forward. You can actually look into the mirror. So I kind of played around with this a little bit, it took a little time and I made sure that I kind of held it until the glue set. And then I've had this up no problem and everything has stayed in place. Now I did have this little knob from Hobby Lobby that I added some glue and added to the top, totally optional, but I thought it added a nice touch. Back to those tile signs, I'm gonna show you a way to make a easy vase for a faux plant. All I did for this was just take those tiles. I cut and trimmed some of the chevron peel and stick wallpaper from Dollar Tree. And then the only thing I did when I, um, I almost said painted, when I hot glued the four sides of this is that I just kind of made sure that the chevron pattern followed into the next. So it just kind of looked more cohesive. Um, you can add a base to this if you want. Um, I just left it open because I figure depending on the faux kind of greenery or florals I'm using. If I'm going to put it over an existing pot, I can do that. Um, you can of course shut this and then actually use this as something functional. You could put like pens in it. This would be great on a desk. Um, yeah, lots of different options for this. So keep that in mind. You don't have to make this decorative. This can be a functional piece as well. And this is how it turned out. I have some faux greenery on here or in here, and I think it looks great. And again, I just love that chevron wood pattern with the Dollar Dollin Tree. I cannot talk. Dollar Tree. There we go. Peel and stick wallpaper.
tree always has long signs, so I'm going to show you a way that you can display artwork or different things you want to hang using that and some command hooks. Since the printable does not cover the entire sign, I wanted to take some white chalk paint, give it two good coats on either side, about a quarter of the way on each end, just so that it kind of blends in with the background of the printable. Again, all my printables will be in the description box below, and if you have any issues printing them, my email is also in the description box. You can always email me, let me know what you want, and I will send you those PDF files directly. I always say that I make these printables for you guys, so if you have any issues downloading them, never hesitate to reach out to me. It may take me a day or two, but I read my emails and I will get back to you. So once I have this printable centered, I'm just going to trim it and then we are going to attach this with some spray adhesive. Now you can leave this as is, but I decided to take my Cricut. Again, you can use poster stickers. You can add another printable on top of this. I just wanted this to pop. So I used some black vinyl and then I put look what I made on this. I thought this would be a cute decorative way to um, display my girls little coloring projects. But again, this is for inspiration. So you can always make this and tailor it to whatever your home needs or your decor style is. So once that's attached, I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree, their version of like a command hook. I'm going to use four of them. Now you can also use some of the wood clips from the Dollar Tree, but I could not find mine. So I can still use these and then I'm going to use some little, um, I got these for a curtain, little curtain rod hooks. They have the ring and then a little clip on the end. Um, so I decided to use that and actually I like the way that this is better because it kind of drops a bit when I add the artwork on there. It's not super crowded to the sign if that makes sense. And once you have everything on there, you're ready to hang whatever you want. And I think this is a great way that my girls can just display their artwork once they are done with it. And I love how it looks in this little gallery wall that I have in my living room. item that Dollar Tree always has is a shelf liner. And this is a great base for a lot of DIY projects. So Dollar Tree has a lot of scrap wood pieces. I picked up this square piece. This is great. I instantly thought of like a large coaster. Except the problem with wood is that if you don't finish it and it's a whole process, it smells. Like let me know in the comments if you agree. Like I love like the look of like a sealed wood and the functionality of it, but I just can't stand the process and the smell. So get yourself a shelf liner. They come in all different designs. And if you pick one, so I picked the marble one from Dollar Tree. It gives me like kind of like that marble look. Um, I did a while ago some West Elm faux marble looking um, coasters. This gives me that look without the faux painting. And the shelf liner protects the wood. So you can put a glass or a mug on there and you're not going to get that wood ring and then destroy the wood below. So it is decorative and equal parts functional, my favorite. And next I'm gonna show you how to take one of the long, thick MDF signs from Dollar Tree and make this into a functional jewelry piece. Now I wanted to make this decorative, so I did add some macrame, but that's totally optional. You can also just hang yarn from this as well. This was just take some black paint and paint over everything. Um, if you don't want to paint this, you can also use the Dollar Tree peel and stick wallpaper. That's a good option for this as well. I left the bottom as is, um, but I did paint the top and the sides as well, just to have everything covered. You know in the comments some projects that you have made using these signs. Every time I see them, I feel like there are so many possibilities for them since they're so big. Um, so I'm always curious to see what people make with these signs. Now while that's 
draw, I almost said painting. While that's drying, I'm gonna take a piece of wood and some macrame cord that I already had cut. Um, I always like to cut my cord long, I just kind of eyeball it. Now, if you do want some macrame cord, Dollar Tree does sell some, but just keep in mind that it is smaller quantities. So with the cord, you're just gonna take it and you're going to loop it through to attach it to the dowel. You're gonna do that for all the pieces and I cut 20 pieces out for this project. The Dollar Tree masking tape or painter's tape, whatever you call it, um, I'm going to tape this down. I just find that it makes it a lot easier to make the knots. So for this, we are just gonna do some basic square knots. So you're gonna take that two, st two strands, two sets, there we go. And you're gonna make like a four, go over, under, and through those middle pieces, tie, or knot them. Words are hard today, guys. <laughs> and then you're gonna do the same thing from the other side. So make a four, go over, under, and through, and that completes the square knot. Now for this project, I did a row of square knots for the beginning, and then I just took um, I alternated. So I did the square knots going on the first row. And then for the second row, I just took the outer two strands on either side, put them to the side, then just did one less square knot. So for this, I'm gonna try not to ramble too much because I feel like the video just kind of speaks for itself. So for this first row, we're just gonna do some basic square knots. I will have my square knot tutorial and some more detailed square knot um, videos down below if you want those for reference. Um, but this is a really easy square knot, very beginner friendly. And also I wanna add, if you don't wanna do macrame for this, you don't have to. You can actually just leave it in the first step as a hanging and you can still attach some pieces to that. So keep that in mind. Or another option too is you can go on Amazon, you can just get a small macrame hanging, attach it to the sign. We're still gonna add some hooks and stuff and you can still get something that is decorative and functional. So we're gonna continue with this first row with those square knots. First row is complete. We're going to take those outer two strands on either side and we're going to start connecting the square knot. So the same thing, you're just going to take two from either set and it's just continuous here. And then you're going to do your square knots so that you have the second row. Continue this three times so that you have alternating all square knots, then removing the two outer strands to having one less square knots. Um, how many times you repeat this pattern just depends on how long you want this. But then at the end, we're gonna continuously, which I'll show you, take away two strands so that it ends up creating a V. I did a little more um, detailed tutorial of that, which will also be in the description box below. And I believe I do have a macrame playlist. Either way, check the description box. Those videos will be there. So I'm still continuing right now that pattern of square knots before we start deducting strands.
We already have the two strands on either side out. Now we're gonna take another two strands on either side, continue the square knots. And then once this row is done, we're gonna take again the two strands on the outside. So each time you're gonna have more strands on the out than you are from the stitches that you're making or the knots. Um, and it's gonna create a V look. It does create a V as much as you keep moving those strands. And also if you don't wanna do the V and you find it's a little confusing, although I think it's a little easier because you're doing less strands, you don't have to do that. You could just continue square knots. So lots of different options. Again, I like to show everything for inspiration, but always make things the way that you want them, um, depending on how you want it, of course. <laughs> option you can leave this as is or you can take the outer strand and do a half hitch knot so basically you make a little u loop and then you pull the strand twice and it creates like a knot and it's just a nice kind of finishing look so you do that on either side till it meets in that v on that very center square knot and then you continue the other side same thing Continue the same thing on the other side and then we're going to secure that with a center square knot or you could just do a regular knot to make sure everything is together. Once all the knots are complete, I am just going to brush everything out and then trim it. Um, I also like to do this once I have the piece hanging up, just so I can kind of step back and see where everything lays and what needs to still be trimmed and brushed. Okay, so now once that main piece is dry, we are going to um, add some of these coffee hooks or cup hooks I think they are you can get them at Home Depot they're pretty cheap and the nice thing is this is a thick enough piece of MDF that you don't need any like tools you can just screw these in by hand so I first placed where I'm going to center the macrame piece that's important with this and then I decided to do two hooks on either side figure you can hang like necklaces bracelets things like that on either side so once I did that I just made sure it was as even as possible to the other side Add in the other hooks. I just wanted to see where that macrame piece is going to lay on this. So I centered it where I want it and then I just took a pencil just to make some markings so that I know um, where to put the second set of hooks so that they're not going to interfere with the macrame hanger once that is on. All the hooks are on it is time to hot glue this so I first started with a little bit of hot glue on the top and then I am going to reinforce this with some cord that's going to wrap around just because this will be a functional piece that is going to have um, jewelry on it and obviously some added weight I want to make sure that everything stays in place so once that hot glue set I just took some macrame cord I looped it knotted it and then secured it with some hot glue on either side just to make sure that everything stays in place and that it will withstand the weight of the jewelry that I put on this Really optional, but I thought the Dollar Tree wood bead strands would look really nice on this. So I'm just going to drape this in the front and then secure it with some hot glue in the back. And I thought this was a nice way to add 
those wood beads, add a little bit more of a decorative touch to this just so that everything looks all nice. And that is it for this. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like and how I have it styled slash using it for my jewelry. about this is on its own it's really pretty and decorative it definitely just looks like a really nice macrame piece that you can decorate with and then it's also functional so those hooks can serve as storage for necklaces bracelets you can carefully loop through like I did some earrings in the main macrame piece and you have a just really pretty and functional way to totally transform those MDF signs from the Dollar Tree. So let me know in the comments if you think you'll be trying this out, if you enjoyed this project. I hope you enjoyed these 10 functional and decorative hacks. These are some of my favorite that I've made on my channel. I definitely have plans to make more. I always like to share things that are both decorative and functional. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also let me know in the comments which of these projects you liked the most. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.